Okay, we are picking from where we had stopped yesterday concerning the abiotic factors in an ecosystem and how they affect the distribution of living organisms. After discussing all such abiotic factors, we are supposed to pick from wind. Wind as an abiotic factor. We said abiotic factors are physical factors. They are environmental, non-living factors that affect the distribution of living organisms in the ecosystem. Without forgetting, we said an ecosystem is a natural unit composed of biotic and abiotic factors whose interactions lead to a self-sustaining system. So how does wind affect the distribution of living organisms? And first of all, what's wind? We know very well that wind is air in motion. Wind is air in motion. Or simply moving air. So wind, excessive wind, excessive wind or when there's strong wind, it affects transpiration. Excessive wind can increase the rate of transpiration. It increases transpiration rate. Wind, when there is strong wind, it increases transpiration rate, and we know transpiration is the loss of water, vapor, from the plant surface. So strong wind increases transpiration. In this case, it's a disadvantage because it can lead to permanent wilting, excessive loss of water. Then it also increases evaporation. Evaporation is increased. It increases evaporation from the body surface of living organisms. Wind also necessitates, or wind facilitates, it facilitates pollination. Wind facilitates pollination. And the pollination in this case, we talk about insect pollinated, insect pollinated flowers or plants. It facilitates pollination. The transfer of pollen grains from the under to the stigma, the pollination. When you talk about not insect pollinated, but wind pollinated flowers, what we call anemovilas. Wind also leads to fruit and seed dispersal. Fruit, it assists or it aids in fruits and seed dispersal fruits and seed dispersal. Wind facilitates fruits and seed dispersal. Dispersal means the spread, the spreading away of the fruits and the seeds. And we know this is an advantage because it reduces overcrowding. Wind facilitates or it leads to waves. Wind leads to waves in lakes and oceans in lakes and oceans. Wind leads to waves in lakes and oceans. And when we have these waves, it leads to what we call aeration. The waves lead to what we call aeration. Aeration means you now free secretion of gases, free secretion of air in the water bodies, which is an advantage to aquatic living organisms. Wind also influences, wind influences, Wind influences predation. Wind influences predation. It influences predation and the migration of animals. And the migration of animals. And the migration of animals. Wind influences predation and the migration of animals. How? When we talk about predation, we say the predation as a form of biotic factor where one organism called the predator hunts and kills another one called the prey. So wind assists in terms of, talk about location of the scent, or the location of the smell of either the prey or the predator. So it can be able to follow where the scent or where the smell is coming from because of wind. Migration. Animals can migrate due to that following of that scent. And Finally, in terms of wind as an abiotic factor, the speed of wind, speed of wind is measured. Speed of wind is measured 
using an instrument called an anemometer, called an anemometer. And the direction of wind, direction of wind is measured using wind sock or using a wind vein. Can you use a wind vein or a wind sock? Remember we said these are biotic factors. As much as you are discussing how they influence distribution of living organisms, you must also mention the instrument which is used to do what? To measure that aspect. Then, after understanding this wind, the last, the last one, not necessarily the last one, we talk about the pH. The pH as an abiotic factor. pH as an abiotic factor. pH. The other one is pH. Hydrogen pH. Hydrogen ion concentration. Hydrogen ion concentration. Hydrogen ion concentration. Hydrogen ion concentration. That is the pH. So how does pH? The pH influences the pH influences distribution. The pH influences the distribution. It influences the distribution of organisms, of organisms, of organisms in the soil, of organisms in the soil and in fresh water habitats, and in fresh, and in fresh water habitats, and in fresh water habitats, and in fresh water habitats. When you talk about hydrogen ion concentration, we are talking about acidity. Some definition can say pH means acidity or alkalinity. So the hydrogen ion concentration, it influences the distribution of organisms in the soil and in freshwater bodies. Because there are some aquatic plants which grow in the fresh water. So in terms of plants, some plants, some plants, some plants thrive. Some plants thrive well in acidic soils. Some plants thrive well in acidic soils, while others, while others, while others thrive, while others thrive well in alkaline, in alkaline habitats. Some plants thrive well in acidic soils, while other ones thrive well in alkaline soils or in that habitat. So the pH, there are those plants which can do well in acidic conditions, acid, there are those ones which can do well in alkaline solution. So it depends. Those plants, every plant has an adaptation to make it survive in the, um, if it is an acidic condition or if it is in alkaline solution. There are some also which can do well in neutral conditions. Some can do well in neutral conditions, not too acidic, not too alkaline. So the pH is the hydrogen ion concentration. It influences the distribution of organisms in the soil and in fresh water, not in marine. Fresh water is the water which has low concentration of salts or no salts. Then the pH, finally, the pH is measured. The pH is measured using the pH scale. It's measured using the pH scale or PDH. PDH, universal indicator. PDH, universal indicator. So I'm saying this. The pH only affects the distribution of living organisms in soil and the freshwater habitats. We say the habitat is a specific locality with a particular set of conditions where a living organism lives or occupies. So we have categories of plants which can survive or which can grow 
or which can do well in acidic soils or habitats. There are those ones which can do well in the alkaline soils. There are those ones which can do well in neutral conditions, sorry, neutral soils. So a plant cannot do well at the same time in acidic, in alkaline and in neutral. It must be a specific habitat. Then the last one is salinity. The last one, a biotic factor, is salinity. The last one, a biotic factor, is salinity. Salinity. The last one is salinity. Salinity refers to salinity refers to salt. It refers to salt concentration. It refers to salt concentration in water. In water bodies. When you talk about an environment is saline. Saline, saline. The salt. <coughs> salt concentration in water. Salt concentration in water bodies. I'm specifically in water bodies, not in soils, in water bodies. So, or you can just say it refers to salt concentration. It can also be salt concentration. Salt concentration refers to salt concentration in aquatic habitat, in aquatic environment, or in the aquatic habitat. Salt concentration in aquatic environment. So we have categories of aquatic environment. Aquatic environment is divided into three. Aquatic environment. Aquatic environment is divided into three. Aquatic environment is divided into three. We have fresh, we have fresh Fresh water environment, fresh water environment, aquatic environment. We have marine environment, we have marine environment, and we have estuarine environment. We have estuaries environment. So, when you talk about the fresh water environment, the salt concentration. Salt concentration, salt concentration is low or there is no, or no salt, or no salt concentration. The marine, the marine environment, the marine environment, there is high concentration, high concentration, in the marine environment, there is high concentration of salts, high concentration of salts that are stable. High concentration of salts that are stable. High concentration of salts that are stable. In estuaries, the concentration of salts, concentration, the concentration of salts varies. The concentration of salt varies or tend to fluctuate. It varies or it fluctuates. You are saying salinity is the salt concentration in the aquatic environment, water environment, all in the water bodies. Aquatic environment is divided into three. We have the fresh water environment in terms of salt concentration. In terms of salt concentration, the aquatic environment is divided into three. We have the fresh water environment where the salt concentration is very low or there is no salt concentration in that water body. Marine environment, there is very high concentration of salts that are stable. The salt concentration in terms of measurements are very stable. Estuaries, I'm talking about the estuaries or I can just also say, say the estuarine the estuarine environment, the concentration of salt varies. It tends to fluctuate, goes high, goes low, but it is not stable. 
Then, how does salinity affect distribution of living organisms? It affects salinity, affects salinity, affects or it influences osmotic. Salinity affects osmotic, salinity affects osmotic pressure, osmotic pressure of living organisms. It affects the osmotic pressure of living organisms. We are saying the saline environment is divided into two in terms of the salt concentration. We have the fresh water, the marine, the estuaries. So either fresh, marine or estuaries, they tend to interfere with the osmotic pressure of living organisms in terms of their cells. Organisms in each habitat, organisms in each habitat, organisms in each habitat, organisms in each habitat, organisms in each habitat have adaptations, have adaptations, organisms in each habitat have adaptations which enable them to survive, which enable them, which enable them to survive, which enables them to survive, which enable them to survive. Every organism, if it's an organism surviving in the, for example, in the Indian Ocean, which is a marine environment, it has some adaptations which makes that organism to survive there. With that type of fish living there, it has some adaptation. If it is a crocodile, which is found in the freshwater environment, because most crocodiles, they don't live in the marine environment salts, it has some adaptations to regulate what? To regulate it is osmotic pressure. To regulate it is osmotic pressure. To regulate its osmotic pressure. The salt concentration can be measured by using the titration method or by simply measuring the amount of that salt concentration in water using the uh, titration method. Then, after finishing the abiotic factors in the ecosystem, which are non-living environmental factors, and how they affect the distribution of living organisms, make sure you know that each abiotic stays on its own paragraph. If in terms it's an easy equation, if it is wind, it's own paragraph. Say how it affects the distribution of living organisms, what is used to measure that. Then now I can leave before I go to something else, I can just leave there as an assignment. You could be trying on your own. This is explain how the following, how the following abiotic factors, how the following abiotic factors is an assignment you do on your own. Explain how the following abiotic factors influence influence the distribution influence the distribution of living organisms how they influence the distribution of living organisms in the ecosystem in the ecosystem one is water or rainfall. Two is wave action. That's what we call currents, wave action. Three is soil composition. Soil composition. Soil composition. Then four is soil texture. Soil texture. Five is topography. Is topography. Is topography. You need to do research on this 
You write, these are, I should see, five paragraphs, well written, well explained, using biological terms, because you also need to dig deep and work hard. You don't need to sit there and wait to be spoon-fed. You must go here and work hard, do research on this, as much as you are revising, as much as you are also concentrating on your work. Then now, after that, we proceed from our breakdown. Next is the nitrogen cycle. The nitrogen cycle. Still we are under ecology, the nitrogen cycle. The nitrogen cycle. The nitrogen cycle. Supposed to see what is nitrogen cycle. Talk about the nitrogen cycle. Why do we study nitrogen and ecology? Nitrogen is required in plants for synthesis of proteins, for the synthesis of proteins, making of proteins, and you know proteins are bodybuilding food. So nitrogen is needed. When we talk about the nitrogen cycle, we are talking about the cycling of nitrogen and some of its compounds in nature. Nitrogen as an element is found in the atmosphere. How does that nitrogen enters plants? Then plants, it goes to animals. Because remember we said plants are primary producers. They are primary producers. So, when I talk about the nitrogen cycle, we are going to see in the two ways in which nitrogen is made available to plants. <coughs> remember, plants don't take nitrogen as an element, but they absorb nitrogen in the process called absorption, and what they absorb is the nitrates. It's what they call the nitrates. The nitrates. So nitrogen is made available to plants through a process called nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation. How is nitrogen fixed in plants? We are going to see that later. So I'm saying nitrogen cycle is the recycling of nitrogen and the sum of its compounds in nature. How nitrogen comes, enters the soil, from the soil it goes to the atmosphere, from the atmosphere it comes to the plants. But when you talk about fixation, how do now plant roots absorb that nitrogen? I'm saying it is through absorption and they take in nitrogen in form of nitrates, not as a nitrogen element, not as a nitrogen element or as a nitrogen gas, but in form of nitrates. So when you talk about the process of nitrogen fixation, before we proceed, you can give here a definition. I've said that nitrogen cycle is the cycling of nitrogen, 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 the cycling of nitrogen, and the sum of its compounds, 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 and the sum of its compounds in nature, and sum of its compounds in nature, and sum of its compounds in nature. This is what I'm saying. Eh? The nitrogen. When I talk about cycling. The nitrogen. The nitrogen is in the atmosphere. The nitrogen is in the atmosphere. Then that nitrogen goes to plants. From plants, it goes to animals. From the animals, again, it can go back to the atmosphere. And from plants, it can go back to the atmosphere. So we are talking about the cycling of nitrogen and some of its compounds in nature. So the nitrogen cycle starts with the element nitrogen in air. It starts with the element nitrogen in air. This is what I'm saying. It starts, it starts with the nitrogen. It starts with the nitrogen element in air. It starts with the nitrogen, nitrogen element in the air in the atmosphere. So when you talk about the nitrogen the process through which nitrogen now is incorporated into the plant's bodies so that they can make proteins. Then animals get proteins either directly by feeding on plants 
or indirectly by feeding on other animals which had fed on plants. For example, when you feed on meat from a camel, the camel had fed on green plants. The green plants are the ones which had transferred that nitrogen in form of proteins. So nitrogen, that process is called nitrogen fixation. The nitrogen fixation, saying the process, the process through which through which nitrogen is made available is made available or is incorporated the process through which nitrogen is made available to plants for absorption to plants for absorption in the soil in the soil is known as nitrogen is known as nitrogen fixation is known as nitrogen fixation is known as nitrogen fixation so there's a difference between nitrogen cycle and nitrogen fixation the process by which nitrogen is made available to plants for absorption in the soil is known as nitrogen fixation nitrogen fixation is done in two ways there is what we call talk about nitrogen fixation the nitrogen fixation the nitrogen fixation is done in two ways nitrogen process of nitrogen fixation process of nitrogen fixation the process of nitrogen fixation process of nitrogen fixation is done in two ways is done in two ways is done two ways the first one is what we call non biological non biological nitrogen fixation non biological nitrogen fixation and the second one is biological nitrogen biological nitrogen fixation biological nitrogen fixation it's done in two ways how nitrogen is made available non-biological and biological let me start with non-biological nitrogen fixation non-biological process non-biological process non-biological nitrogen fixation when you talk about non-biological we mean there is no living organism which is involved in making nitrogen to be available, non-biological. No nitrogen, no living organism is involved in transforming the nitrogen element into nitrates because plants take nitrogen in form of nitrates through absorption. So non-biological process, this is during thunderstorms, during thunder and lightning. The nitrogen in the atmosphere combines with oxygen to form nitrogen 4 oxide. The nitrogen 4 oxide, remember when I talk about thunder and lightning, you cannot have thunder and lightning without rain. So during rain season, when there is thunder and lightning, the thunderstorms, thunder and lightning, the nitrogen in the atmosphere combines with oxygen to form nitrogen 4 oxide gas. The nitrogen 4 oxide gas will dissolve in the rain water to form nitric acid and nitrous acid or to form nitric 5 acid and nitric 4 acid form nitric 5 and nitric 4 acid then the, those two acids they will dissolve in the soil because the rain is falling down they will dissolve in soil as acid rain then in the soil they will combine with chemicals in the soil to form nitrates then the nitrates are absorbed by the plant roots and it is being used in the synthesis of proteins so i'm saying during thunder during thunder storms and lightning during thunder storms and lightning nitrogen in the atmosphere come as a gas combines with oxygen as a gas to form nitrogen 4 
to form nitrogen four oxide gas to form nitrogen four oxide gas the nitrogen four oxide gas the nitrogen four oxide gas will dissolve in the rain water this is the rain water the rain water which is a liquid to form two acids the acids i'm saying are the nitric acid or nitric five acid which is aqueous plus nitrous acid the nitrous acid which is aqueous in this case then these two acids the two acids eh, will form the two acids eh, these two acids these two acids eh, the two acids will dissolve in the soil they will dissolve in the soil they will dissolve in soil with combination of some ions or chemicals with some ions in the soil with some chemicals in the soil with some chemicals in the soil to form nitrates to form nitrates then the nitrates are the ones which are going the nitrates are the ones which are going to be absorbed by the plant roots to make what we call the synthesis of proteins so this is what i'm insisting the nitrogen fixation is done in two ways non-biological and biological i'm saying bio non-biological non-biological there is no involvement of any living organism or microorganism simply during thunderstorms when it's raining the light and the thunder the sound you hear plus that light will combine nitrogen gas with oxygen gas in the atmosphere because these gases are found in the atmosphere to form nitrogen 4. The nitrogen 4 will dissolve in rain water to form the nitric and nitrous acid. Then these two acids will fall down as acid rain, <coughs> then they dissolve in the soil. Once they dissolve in the soil, they will combine with some of the chemicals which are found in the soil to form nitrates. When they form the nitrates, to form nitrates then the nitrates ions remember these are ions or these radicals then they are the ones which are going to be absorbed it's a radical they're going to be absorbed by the plant roots and they're going to be used in the synthesis of proteins and animals will obtain proteins directly by feeding on plants or indirectly by feeding on other animals which had already fed on those plants because you said plants are the primary producer after understanding that allow me please to go to the last one before i draw that flow chart all the cycle then biological nitrogen fixation biological nitrogen fixation the biological nitrogen fixation biological nitrogen fixation the biological nitrogen fixation biological nitrogen fixation biological nitrogen fixation and talk about biological we are talking about living organisms which assist living organisms which assist in the fixing of nitrogen to plants this one majorly is done by living organisms example of living organisms we have a we have symbiotic we have symbiotic symbiotic bacteria we have symbiotic bacteria we have free living bacteria free living bacteria free living bacteria we have free living, the free living bacteria. And in this case, we can talk about the Clostridium. The free living bacteria, Clostridium. This one can talk about the Rhizopium. The Rhizopium. Then you can also talk about some algae. There are algae. These are living organisms. The algae which fix that nitrogen, nostoc, and abayana can talk about the nostoc nostoc anabaena anabaena 
and chlorella anabaina and chlorella so let's see what happens what happens when these living organisms what you call the biological ones when they fix nitrogen clostridium so let's start with the the symbiotic bacteria remember we have two types of bacteria symbiotic we said symbiotic bacteria when we are discussing about um, biotic factors symbiosis symbiotic bacteria these are bacteria which lives these bacteria they normally stay in the they stay in the root in the root nodules in the root nodules in the root nodules of leguminous plants in the root nodules of leguminous leguminous plants leguminous for example you are talking about the the peas the cowpeas these are the nodules I'm repeating again the nodules are swellings this is a nodule nodule so swellings on those plants which grow in nitrogen deficient soils so the symbiotic bacteria will convert the nitrogen the symbiotic bacteria will normally convert the nitrogen they will normally convert free nitrogen to nitrates they convert free nitrogen they convert free nitrogen to nitrates that is in the soil they convert free nitrogen into nitrates they convert the free nitrogen into nitrates and the plants will absorb this nitrates in the process of absorption remember i'm insisting plants don't take nitrogen as a free element but in form of nitrates this ion or that radical the next we can proceed ahead and talk about the free living bacteria they fix nitrogen in the soil also the same as by forming changing the nitrogen into nitrates the algae the nostoc anabine and the chlorella they fix nitrogen also to form nitrates and the plants are going to absorb this nitrogen nitrates to make proteins also we can also talk about when plants die and animals die they decompose when animals and plants die they decompose or they are decomposed by the saprophytic bacteria so in summary form we are saying yeah, the biological nitrogen fixation is done by three living organisms symbiotic bacteria that the rhizopium which lives in the root nodules of leguminous plants there then we have the free living bacteria free living free living does not depend on remember this symbiotic is depending on shelter carbohydrates water from that root nodules and also at the same time it's fixing the free living it's found freely depending on its own an example is the clostridium then the algae which also assist in fixing nitrogen is the nostoc anabaina and the chlorella so next our next lesson next time we are going to pick on from the nitrogen cycle and how do these biological living organisms fix the nitrogen in the soil that's in the next lesson we are going to pick on from there to discuss how symbiotic free living the algae and in form of also we draw the nitrogen cycle the flow chart to show how the process occurs for today thank you so much